All right, my friends, how are you today? Aaron Michael Eschenberg here, Honest Dame, bringing you some honest astrology about the Mercury retrograde that starts today on the 14th of October through the 3rd of November. We have a very special Mercury retrograde going on right now. Okay. Now, this happens three times a year. You're most likely, this isn't your first Mercury retrograde video that you're watching. You know, this is our planet of communication, becomes closer to Earth. Uh, and things can be a little haywire. Uh, our electronics can go out on us. This is, uh, you know, the, the email that we thought sent never sent. It ended up in a queue or cached, whatever. Uh, you know, communication can be uh, misunderstood. Okay. But there is. The, you know, and they say, don't travel during this time. Don't sign paperwork during this time. It's like some of this stuff is absolutely impossible. Okay. Uh, the, 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 the gist of the Mercury retrograde is it begin, again, because our planet of communication is closer to Earth. This means the antenna is, is overwhelming. Okay. It's too close for us to pick up the signal to translate and communicate properly. Okay. So basically what this means is don't put the carriage before the horse in anything. We also have a Mars retrograde right now, and both of them are going to be coming out of retrograde around the same time in November. Okay, so Mercury ends on November 3rd, Mars ends on November 13th. Okay, but again, there's a bigger picture going on here. It's not just about Mercury retrograde in Scorpio. All right, um, let me show you the chart here. There is this divine connection happening between Saturn, the lawmaker, karma, okay, the manifester of the third dimension, okay, and Neptune, the oneness, the dreams, the imagination, the abyss, the nothingness, okay. So this connection that's happening here between Saturn and Neptune is called a septile. That septile is a fate and destined connection. With these two being in their home signs, meaning there's no other element, no other force, that are being interjected onto Saturn or onto Neptune. That means these two are free, okay, free in their in their powers to create and manifest our dreams into reality, okay. Uranus is also here shaking things up for us, creating this septile as well between Neptune, Uranus, and Uranus septile to Saturn, okay. Uranus is the the planet of release. Saturn is tension. Uranus is release, Neptune is expansion, okay? This is very, very important to understand this dynamic before we get into the shadow side of this Mercury retrograde, okay? And I'll explain everything here in just a moment. But this is extremely potent and powerful, as specifically this connection between Neptune and Saturn, uh, which won't happen again for about 500 or so years, okay? Hundreds and hundreds of years, this will not happen in their home signs. This wants us to manifest our dreams into reality, our biggest, wildest dreams into this physical reality, into this here right now, okay? And this Mercury retrograde is extremely potent as well as the Mars retrograde during this time because we must surrender parts of ourselves and we must acknowledge part of our shadow, okay? This is so extremely important right now. So I'm gonna be talking about the shadow side of the entire zodiac here in just a moment. I'm going to walk through this. Okay. So coming back here for just a second, when we're talking about our shadow and we have Venus, you know, Venus and the moon in, in the sign of Virgo right now, which is, you know, being focused, being driven, uh, writing lists, taking note of what's going on in our lives. Uh, Venus opposing Neptune saying, look, I have to be focused on that of which I want and that which I desire. Okay, bring it into a, a alignment within me. Okay, and we're getting ready to have this, this new moon, this Libra new moon as well, which understands our relationship with other people is extremely important. That we do need other people. Not only do we need other people, but we need to be there for other people. Okay, we have to be there. We have to shell out our goods and our services and, and, and get out of our own um, lack of ambition, lack of motivation, lack of wanting to do something, energy that can be present during this time, especially with both of our, our personal planets, Mercury and Mars retrograde. It's just saying we have to. There's stuff that we have to do. You know, just because we don't want to do them doesn't mean we don't have to do them. So this is part of our shadow, okay? 
as well when we have Venus and Neptune in opposition, things that can be coming up, um, going to the abyss, Neptune in, in the sign of uh, Pisces. You know, we can escape our reality, this very physical reality. Saturn and, uh, Saturn and Pluto and Jupiter are all up in Capricorn saying, this is the present, this is the physical reality, this is the moment... This is the space that we need to be occupying and be aware of and to be here, be present, be now. Okay, Neptune is, is interesting as it's, you know, this opioid epidemic happening right now, which is telling people escape this reality. It's too difficult. It's too hard to, to deal with this, the, the cold hard truth of the physical reality. So I'm going to escape using drugs, using sex, using video games, uh, entertainment, television, something like that. Anything. It can be anything. Gambling. It can be anything. Okay. That is bringing us away from our present moment. Okay. But it's in this present moment here, this physical now, you know, this connection with ourselves, this connection with nature that's going to illuminate the shadow, okay? Um, and that's where we have to be because what we're trying to do is we're trying to align with our dreams. We're trying to manifest our dreams into physical reality. This is the Neptune, Saturn, and Uranus connection. And it's saying break through, break free. Break free of the old. You know, if we're addicted or have been addicted to something, this is the month and the time to free ourselves of those addictions, to free ourselves of those crutches that no longer serve us, that we no longer need, okay? Um, because we need to pre prepare ourselves for what's coming, the life that, that we have been manifesting that's coming in front of us. So we can't bring these old parts of ourselves into this new life. It will not work. Something I've talked about on this channel before, it was a, it was a gentleman that was a homeless guy that had this amazing, amazing voice, um, and he ended up, uh, you know, there's there's videos of him in YouTube. I've talked about him on the channel before. And he has that great radio voice. And he, he ended up being the announcer for the Cleveland Cavaliers, you know. And, and they took this uh, homeless gentleman and they gave him everything he needed, okay. He aligned with his dreams. But he didn't identify the shadow. He didn't work through his shadow, okay. So although he had the job. Although he had, you know, income, steady income, and he was taken care of and appreciated by people, okay, and this turnaround beautiful story, but the guy didn't, didn't work through his own shadow, you know, and he went right back to the drinking, right back to the lifestyle of in that streets, and he couldn't transition, ended up losing his job, losing the position. Okay, so we're trying to manifest this life of our dreams, but we have work to do before we get there. And this Mercury retrograde is a huge part of that so that we can truly let go of aspects of ourselves, whether that is addictions or whether that's uh, part, pieces of our own personality. Okay, and here in, in, in Scorpio, move, we're, we're retrograde from Scorpio back into Libra. Okay, and it's understanding as well that we all have sexual desires, deep-rooted sexual desires and fantasies. We all have, uh, you know, fantasies or, or ideas of power or control. Uh, you know, th this is the, the depths of oneself that is not necessarily on the surface. This isn't the, uh, an earth sign. This isn't the things that you can see, the physicalities. This is deep-rooted emotions that we're dealing with that are coming up to light, okay, that are going to be triggered during this time. So this is really important that we sit with ourselves and don't run. We don't escape. Okay, that's the key right now is to sit with ourselves, to breathe through it, to feel, right? The, the, how do lobsters grow? Lobsters grow because they expand within their shell and it becomes painful. All right, the rabbi, there's a rabbi that talks about this on YouTube. They become painful. They shed their shell, they go under a rock, it becomes very vulnerable because they can be eaten by prey. They don't have their shell on them. Okay, they don't have their claws and pinchers ready to go. So then they, they build their new exoskeleton shell. They go out in the world, they eat, they become bigger and bigger and bigger. They expand. Okay, then they expand within their shell. Their shell doesn't expand. Okay, this is the Neptune, Uranus, Saturn thing. We are expanding and our shell does not grow. So we need to shake free of it, says Uranus. We need to shake free of the current shell that we're living in. We need to be vulnerable, go within our shadow, go under the rock. Mercury retrograde, be vulnerable, Mars retrograde. We're not, we're not going out for battle right now. This is not a battle. This is, this is deep inner work that we have to do. And then we build our new exoskeleton shell through our, through our moment of vulnerability. 
and then we're ready to go out again. You see? But if we're, if we're, you know, and the doctor, the rabbi says this beautifully, you know, it's just this minute and a half long video here on YouTube. And it's just like, if these lobsters had doctors, they would never grow because they would be eating pills, taking medication to not feel the pain. And if we're not feeling the pain, then we don't know it's time for our shell, for us to expand. We don't know, if we're not feeling the pain, we don't know it's time to lose that shell, to lose whatever's going on, to become vulnerable, to become open, and to do the work, okay? So if we're feeling pain, my friends, if we're feeling anything right now that resonates with you in, in this so far, th this is it. This is the money. This is where we're headed. And, and to endure this and to recognize it, to lean into that pain, to ask it, you know, why is it present in our life right now? And, and how can we serve it? Did it serve us at one point? And how can we serve it? Okay. So let me, let me get into to the shadow side of the zodiac. Okay. So here in Aries, this is about self. This is about me and mine. Okay. And if I'm so focused on me, my I, I am not going to be good company at, at the dinner party or at recess. Okay. We, we've all met that individual that <laughs> uh, on the recess that's it's like my turn on the monkey bars me 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 i i i i uh you know and this is going back young but that that translated to an adult you know me my i this is all about me and it's not much about you okay so we have to recognize the shadow side of the aries would not be recognizing the relationship of the other and how much we need and appreciate the other okay now we have Taurus here, which is about my, my things, my possessions, my, my, uh, my value, what I value and my things, my things come before my relationship or our things. Okay. So if we're so focused on what's ours, our, our, uh, financial security, our financial stability, we're never going to uh, see the bigger picture and connect with others into seeing how we can grow because we're so worried about just ours. All right? In Gemini here, this is about my wisdom, my thoughts, my knowledge. All right? If we're always focused and we're aware that our thoughts or our knowledge is the end-all, be-all, then we're unaware of the expansion, expansiveness in the communication and knowledge of others. Okay, if we're so focused here on our emotions, on our emotional body, and the non-physical, in the feeling, if we're so focused on feeling everything, it's going to be quite difficult for us to get the job done. Okay, if we're so focused on me being the star of the show, me, uh, my personality, my ego, my... I mean, you know, similar to the Aries field, but this is more about my creative self-expression and, and, and how I'm doing it and, and um, all eyes on me. And if all eyes are on me, then how are we giving back to the community? How are we playing our role in the community if it's all about us? Okay, now we get into our service here, Virgo, and being very focused. And this is very driven and analytical, okay? And if we're being so focused, so driven, so analytical, so go, 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 and there's a right and wrong with everything, and there's a consequence for every action, <laughs> okay? Then we're not focused on the mystery of life, the unknown, the, the probabilities of, of accepting that of which we do not know, okay? This is cold heart, you know, this can be, you know, the death and the change of, of, of just these physical things here on life. And this is, this is, there is no death. There is no life. This, you know, just to, to break for a quick moment, right? Neptune, you know, in old astrology, Neptune was the illusion and Saturn was reality, right? In modern astrology, uh, Neptune is reality and Saturn is the illusion that the, rea that, uh, Saturn is the illusion that this reality is real. Okay. <laughs> this is a, just a kind of a fun, a fun little note there. But you know, if we're so focused here, if we're so focused on right and wrong, then it's hard for us to forgive and be compassionate and be in that oneness of we were once there. Okay. If we're so focused on other people here in Libra, 
If we're so focused on what other people think about us, what other people feel, what other people, then we lose sight of self. We lose sight of our mission here on this planet and what we came here to do. If we're so focused on collectively doing a campaign, collectively what is ours, collectively what we bring to the table, then what do I have for myself? What do I have to show for myself if it's always, always, always about us and how much we can get from the group? Okay? If I'm always going with the, the, the knowledge of the group of the ancestors, the elders, if I'm always going with their truth, with other people's truth, other people's reality, then I'm not living my own reality. I'm not seeking my own truth to be one of the individuals that adds to the greater good. You see? If I'm always focused on work, my public image, career, big business, then I'm neglecting. If I'm always focused on, on Wall Street, then I'm neglecting Main Street. I'm neglecting my home because I'm so focused on work. I'm neglecting my family because I'm focused on business. I'm neglecting my connection with nature, my connection with my emotions because I, I feel that I can't connect with those areas of my life if I want to be successful, right? If I'm always focused on the community, if I always want to be there for other people and always want to be present for other people, then I'm probably not taking enough time for myself to honor my own ego, what my own ego needs to have a healthy relationship with myself, to have a healthy relationship with my ego. And if I'm always <laughs> on the yoga mat, if I'm always doing my breath work, if I'm always in meditation, all right, if I'm, if I'm <laughs> stepping into that space area of the oneness, if I'm always connecting with the oneness, then how can I be here and present for my brothers and sisters? If there's no opinion and there's no right or wrong, then how can we grow? How can we teach one another? Okay, this is part of the balance of the zodiac. And as far as us, our own shadow work, it's recognizing what are we, what are we doing, you know, uh, we know it, this is the areas that we're not shining our light on enough and they're going to be present over the next three weeks. Okay. Very present. And, and, uh, you know, I urge you to lean into those uncomfortable feelings because those uncomfortable feelings allow us to grow. Okay. So there's going to be parts of our personality that are going to become, that are, that are coming up during this time. And it's just like, I'm not an astrologer that tells you don't travel, to don't sign paperwork. I, I have no choice but to sign paperwork over the next couple of weeks here, you know, with a very big deal. And it's just like that doesn't, life doesn't start or stop just because a planet retrogrades, okay? And, and this happens three times a year. So three months of the year, we don't just hide, our, hide underneath, you know, the covers or, or bury our heads into the sand because we're afraid of what's going to come. This is taking a new approach and being excited for what great changes could come into our lives. All right, excited for the opportunity for the expansion. But if we don't feel that pain, if we don't feel that thing stirring deep within us, you know, if we're ignoring it or seeking out the next pleasurable moment of joy or whatever it may be, and we're not sitting with ourselves, this is how we miss this opportunity. And we have this huge life-changing opportunity ahead of us. Again, the Mercury retrograde is a small piece of this much, much bigger puzzle. Okay. Now, the other side of this is maintenance. Okay. Uh, it's under the hood stuff especially dealing with Scorpio. It's under the hood stuff, right? It's the non-physical. So it's just like, has you, have you gotten your car maintenanced? Has your computer been maintenanced? Has your phone, have, do, you, do you delete the cache? Do you delete the, you know, the cookies and all this stuff going on here that slows your phone down? So that way you're not missing email. Have you deleted old emails? You know what I mean? So that way your inbox isn't full or something. You know, there's all kinds of little things that can go, quote unquote, wrong during the Mercury retrogrades. And a lot deals with technology, a lot deals with communication. So the best thing we can do is, is maintenance these things. Check under the hood. Although we, it's not something we normally do. Check under the hood of our car. Take it in. Maybe we need to get our spark plugs done or something. You know, it's little stuff like that. And the same goes with the human body, the human mind, the heart. Okay, we need maintenance. And during this time is the best time of our lives to maintenance ourselves, to check under our own hood, and to see what it is that needs to be that the, the attention needs to brought the attention needs to be brought to. Okay, 
It's not just where we're shining our light, but where we're shining our, where we're reflecting that light, the moon, the emotional need. Okay, so getting ready for this new moon coming up here in Libra, this is also this retrograde because it deals with Scorpio back into Libra uh, and, and Mars and Aries. This deals a lot with other people and understanding our relationship uh, with other people. So that's a huge part of this coming up and understanding that we are the reflection, you know, so we can look at people that we've been blaming in our lives as the reflection, a reflection of ourselves, or the people, the things that we hate about other people, you know, loud mouth chewers, okay, it's just like, that's a trigger or a switch or something, it can be anything, of course, but then there's a, there's a reflection of, in, in oneself, right, what is it about this that, that <laughs> triggers me, what is it about this person, what was it about that situation that's triggered me, that, that's brought me to this point of anger, there's truth, there's an answer into that anger, there's, a, there's an answer into that trigger, Okay, and it's up to us over this next three weeks to try to find out what that stuff is to allow Uranus to do its job is to release and allow Neptune and Saturn to do their job, which is to expand and create a new reality for us. Okay, so if we're doing this shadow work during this time and whatever it is, and of course, feel free to reach out to me if you'd like a personal reading. Um, my email is below. It's AaronEschenberg at gmail.com. Um, this is, I, I look at this as a very exciting and positive time. I might be one of the only ones that talks about this being a very positive time, but it absolutely is. And it should not be considered anything else but positive growth, okay? And confirming that this is a necessary step in what we're feeling to what we're moving into, to the lessons that we learn here over the next several weeks, okay? The next month while Mars is retrograde as well, where we're putting the armor down, where we're putting our combativeness down, and we're opening up and being vulnerable. Yes, when we're vulnerable, the, the sharks are able to get us. You know, the predators are able to get us, but we don't have to worry because that's not going to happen because we're not being combative. We're not, well, that's not the energy we're putting out there. So that's not the energy that we're going to be getting back. Right? So huge opportunity for great change, my friends, huge opportunity for great change, leaning into it. I hope you the very best of Mercury retrogrades ever because we'll never have energy like this again for the rest of our lives. This could be the single most important Mercury retrograde of our lives. <laughs> it's all about the shadow work that we're doing now, which determines on, on how, you know, we cross the bridge when it gets there. When the student's ready, you know, the teacher appears. All right. So it's we're getting ourselves ready for this next chapter of our lives. My friends, have a beautiful day and we'll see you tomorrow.